Hey guys, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. It is Saturday afternoon, the day before Father's Day. I hope all the fathers out there are having a fantastic weekend. Uh, before I get started in this little trade review, um, the purpose of this trade review is going to be to figure out direction, right? So um, uh, first of all, the name of the room, Trade and Perform. If you want to ask for a five-day pass uh, or you like access to the room, you have a question for me, tradeandperform at gmail.com. So the purpose of the algo is to give you a purpose and a plan. So your purpose is obviously to walk in every day. Uh, one of the things I want to make clear before we start, this is not a momentum trading setup. If you try to use it for momentum, my experience has been, is that you will get canned, right? You will get canned hard. You should not use it for momentum unless you're absolutely positive you're willing to take trades. So I want to address something. I want to address something before I even start. And I'm going to look at NASDAQ and I'm going to look at the S&P. But I want to give some basic ideas on just some trading ideas because I've seen some people run into um, problems in the room. So uh, I want to clarify that. So first of all, let's go and hit um, chart. Let's duplicate this chart so we can color on it, mess it up, not worry about it. And then the next thing we're going to do is take off all those support resistance lines. And we're going to look just at the chart kind of naked. Okay. And uh, what we will see, if I can get this over here, There we go. So I'm going to remove the support resistance areas. So every day when we come in the room, right, we already know that we have certain support resistance areas. I can show you what those look like and what we were looking for on the day. So let's start with NASDAQ. And what you will see here, hmm, not all my lines went away, but that's fine. I'll get them, is that if I spread this out, right, market opened up inside uh, single prints, went and tested prior day's high. Rolled back down right into the prior day's point of control, value area low. We chopped through the uh, point of control, then we pushed back up to value area low, back to the single prints. So let me make that a little bit bigger for you. And then we proceeded to slowly grind. Finally, at 12 o'clock, they got a short squeeze, pushed up into the next set of single prints. Um, and this was Dalton's Gap Fill. I forget what date that's from, but it was just a couple days ago. We hit Dalton's got fill, came back to the single prints, rotated back up to the next area of single prints. And that's how support resistance zones are supposed to act, right? So um, the thing that I wanted to bring across, okay, so that's how the, that's how the re recording goes. Now, remember, we have two purposes, right? One is to come in and make money, but the other is to have a plan on how to make the money, right? Everyone who shows up to day trade, Everyone who puts money in the market wants to make money. No one says, I want to lose money. Okay. So the first idea is we try to, in general, stay outside of the prior day's value area, right? Sometimes this is hard, but trust me, over time, it will save you money. That leaves this whole area to stay out of. You'll notice we just poked underneath it right down here. So if you stay out of this area, right, and you wait to get to unfair pricing, you can see they get really big. that we would like to tag into unfair pricing. We did that. We went right down to 11,120, right? And then the market traded. The reason why we want to stay out of here is because the market traded all the way through. Now, the next thing you have to know is if you're trading in here is um, if you grab a trade right in here, right? You're betting that we're going to break all the way through those single prints in a straight line. Sometimes that does happen. It is a bad idea. So again, if you don't know how to read uh, profile, market profile, um, those are single prints. They tend to get rejected. I had someone contact me that went long in that area, and I'm going to show you where they went long, and I'm going to show you why it was a mistake. Okay, and there's two reasons why it was a mistake. First of all, it's a momentum trade because they looked at that chart and said, hey, we should go to Dalton's Gap Fill, right? So I'm going to show you something very, very easy if you're feeling FOMO over chasing a trade and then how to resolve it. Okay, so the first thing they could have done, 
and that you can always do. That you can oh, I want to say this again. The first thing you should have done, and that you can always do to make it easier to find location is draw a 50 60 retrace off of a move. It's super simple, right? Now, I'm going to explain what the plus side and the minus side is. So, in this case, this was the low. Just draw a 50 60 retrace. And then we have certain algos that we're looking for that get over here. Now, there's a contradiction, right? Well, Simon, that's inside the value area. You said we didn't want to trade inside the value area. That's true. Trading's full of contradictions, right? There's no way to just make a, if you want a straight up black and white rule, don't trade in the value area. It'll save you a lot of stops, right? But once you're in the value area, maybe you go, I need additional evidence to take the trade. But what I would never want anyone to do is go long in here. I can draw you 100 of these single prints and going long or short inside an area where you're approaching and into single prints and going long or short in that area is a bad idea. If you want to know what that looks like on a profile, it looks like, let's move this over. It's same thing applies to oil, any product you trade. This is where this gentleman was going long into this long area of single prints. There's an additional area of single prints off the profile right over here. It's just a bad idea to go long there. You're asking for a stop. My suggestion is you don't do it, right? On the other part where there's contradictions, now you have to make a decision. But, but here's how I would resolve that decision, right? If I really in my heart believed that we were going to um, – come up and uh, hit Dalton's gap fill. Excuse me, I lost this chart somewhere, but I'm gonna find it. I believe we're here. No, no, wow, maybe I truly lost my chart. Give me just a second, I feel a bit Mr. Magooish here. Um, here we go. Ah, there we go. I don't know if that doesn't look right for some reason. That just isn't right. Let's see if I can find this one more time. If not, I will give up. Let's see. AQ15. There we go. Ah, there it is. Okay. So, this is how I'd resolve that problem. If I thought we were going to come up here and this is my upside target, then I'm waiting for rotation back down very very natural okay i am waiting for a rotation back down and therefore if that rotation back down takes me into the single prints but i still have a belief that we're going to test 11380 now i'm looking for a signal now i'm going to put it together i'm going to take that i'm going to go look at that 11 220 area and i'm going to look at my charts this is how you string together a trade that makes sense right using the algo so now I'm going to come over to the 24. So where I'm looking, manipulate this over. So here is 11.220. Now, all right, listen to me, okay? This is the important part. So I want you to hear me, okay? Why is this 11220 important? First of all, it's a 50 retrace. Everyone in the world's looking for a 50 retrace. Secondly, the um, person who went long and got stopped, I don't know if they were on 24 and 20 because I don't see where you could have gotten long up on top. This is the area of single prints. And I'm trying to figure out if we had an algo fire here. The only fi algo that I see close to firing on a 24 would have been um, purple bar down, point of control above. But that was a winner. So I know they lost money because they told me they did. Right. Um, you then had parallel triangles here where... You either went with, you had triangle down, then the price closed above the point of control of the down triangle, or you had parallel triangles where you had this down triangle was parallel to this triangle. That would have pushed you up, 
right? I'm trying, just trying to look at all the longs. This is not a long. Um, this is a sixth grade long, like way down the list of what I'm looking for. Uh, not even really in our normal, hey, these are the trades we're looking for. No trade here whatsoever. Uh, no trade here. Uh, the next available trade came right here with pink bar star, purple bar star, excuse me, which is exactly on process, right? So let's go see if they found, if, our, if, if one of the team members had another place where it could have gone south or not to plan, right? So we'll look in that same area. And I know what that person was trying to do. And they, that was, they were trying to get continuation. And now I see where they went, see immediately where they had problems. Okay, so this is the problem right over here at 10 o'clock. Get over here. And wow, if I just don't see the, uh, let me see if I can find the picture. Ah, okay. I see where they got stopped. Okay. Here's the, um, let me actually just simply go to Slack and find the picture and I will post it because it really bothers me. My team members are my priority and it really bothers me when they don't have. So let's see. So first of all, they were on the 24 tick, right? And this was Friday afternoon. I'm going to make sure. So I'm going to go back over here. Maybe I just missed it. Oh, I see. Excuse me. I'm going to go back over here. 12-12. Okay. Well, I wish it, there was a way to erase this easily, but there's not. So I'm going to go back through the same concept. It was a 12-12. Here's the picture of where they lost money. And now I see it exactly. So, you know, losing money is a natural part of trading. I want members to know. So they showed me here. Look, they take purple bar star, triangle down, bar above. Uh, those are the two losses they take back to back. So I'm going to show you something really quick because I think we learn the most. Uh, I think we learn the most from when we make mistakes like I just did. I thought I was in the right time frame and I wasn't. But that's all right. I'm going to fix it. Okay. This is where the client is taking the, or the, the team, team members taking the trade, right? And they are correct setups. If you look where they're taking the trade here. It is um, one of the trades we're looking for is triangle down, bar above. And then the next one would have been, uh, so they got purple bar star, that stopped. And then they got triangle down, closed above. It only exceeded by one point and it stopped. No matter which stop, the aggressive or the conservative stop you used, you got stopped. So let me, let me go through what a couple problems are on this trade here real quick. First of all, they are trying to go long after a third wave. That's a massive wave. Look where that wave is coming in. Okay. So look at the extension up. Okay. So this is why I get bad news. I might even get in trouble because I'm pretty harsh with the team members when they get it wrong. Right. Okay. Why are you going long up here and not down here? Not over here. But all the way up here. So first thing I'm going to say to that member, and in a, in a kind way, compassionate way, not a shaming way, right? But explain why the long is occurring there. And let me let me show you what I mean by is different. Let's say the member thought the market was going higher. So my first experience, um, and Daniel, who's probably one of the best traders, um, one of the best traders in the room, sends me this message. Uh, this weekend and he goes um, uh, and he goes um, well wow, I'm gonna find Daniel's most because I, I asked him about it and he goes um, seriously in futures he goes uh, he goes seriously in futures he goes chasing the momentum is just a great way for them to game you and take your trades out he goes it's 50 50 one at best and not enough for us right but let's go back through and find out, well, where would, have the, where would have I or where would have you looked for more bullish content? Well, let's say you didn't even know how to read these waves in any kind of intricate way, right? Let's just say that. 
And uh, what I would look at is the first thing I would say is, I, so these waves represent cumulative volume, right? So if you have a volume bar, you know a boatload of volume came into the market right off the bottom. Not only do you know that from the look, you can see that there's a higher low, right? And a higher high. We get over these power bars. And let's say I waited till I saw all that evidence. I go, okay, I want to see them lift up. And I don't want to try to catch the bottom. I want to see it going, right? Well, the first thing I'm going to do in this process is I'm going to draw a 50, 60 retrace and hope we hit it, right? So let me show you how to do that. So we're going to come over here. We're going to look at 949 and I go, oh, wow, it's probably going higher now. So I'm going to take from the low, that to the high. And because I'm an aggressive trader from a leverage standpoint, but I am a conservative trader from an entry standpoint, because I use leverage, because I want a high win rate, because I want to make a lot of money with my trades, I'm going to be more conservative on where I enter my trade. You don't have to do that, right? Uh, you can compensate with smaller size and take lots of shots, right? But if you're going to be a shot caller, you're going to use leverage, right? You're going to use leverage. You're going to use be a shot caller. You've got to get some sort of location and you've got to shake out some of the longs to get a good trade. So that means the first thing you know that if you're in my room and you keep trying to grab these highs, you are eventually going to get smoked. The algo was designed as a contra algo, not as a continuation algo, although it works that way sometimes, sometimes, right? But if you will notice on this entire move up, if someone started chasing up here, look how bad they get smoked. If you start chasing, oh, it's breaking out again, stops, stops, stops. So even if my orientation, my orientation is long, my, 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 uh, point of view and the place where I want to be for taking a trade is on a pullback and then find the long. What would the long look like here at 1030 after this first move? So let's go look at two things, right? So how do I know when the market has changed as I cover this in the room? Let's say we didn't have the waves and let's get rid of the waves for a minute. Let's pretend like we did not have these waves at all. Let's just get rid of them. Okay, there, they're gone. See ya. Okay. Well, the first thing that I point out every day and all day long when I'm in the room, if you want a less aggressive entry because you're aggressive on your sizing, the first thing, the first thing you want to do is get above a power bar. Now, does it always work? No. I'll clarify that right now. It doesn't. Look, we get above a power bar right here. See that? We get above a power bar at 9, 12 a.m. Looks like a higher low. And it continues down what you will you will even see that once it got above the power bar it gave a triangle down and then a bar got above now it's not my favorite trade it's not pink bar star or triangle down star but it's a valid entry and that would have been a stop okay that's all right right you've got to draw the line somewhere on what you're looking for right so let's keep going if i'm going to use the more conservative measure nope 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 and I'm going to go with no. There's simply no physical close above here, right? So the next place I have an opportunity to look for long would be here. Now, I have two choices here, right? Here, if I'm going to be aggressive, this is where I want to be more aggressive, right? Why? Because it just broke off the bottom. The buying just came in. They just broke that swing. So it is possible that they'll extend big up, right? So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change my orientation. I'm going to go, wow, they really busted that. Let me look for my long setups. So let's first, without doing any other work, look for what the long setup. So am I shorting now? No, I'm not shorting now, right? Because I'm thinking long. You, you've got to have some kind of attitude of direction, right? You can't, this is not designed to turn, catch every turn, trick, and trade in the market. It's designed to give you an edge once you know which way the market's going. So we use levels, we use profile, we use single prints, prior days lows, things like this, stretches, waves, to help us determine that bigger picture concept and idea. That's number one. Number two, after I have a bigger picture concept or idea, now I'm using the algo to help me out. So in here, right, 
in here, I am looking for long snaps. So, so the first thing that means is I'm going to omit all my shorts. That's okay, right? Which one set up short? And let's rank them from kind of one to five. One being the best, five being the worst. Purple bar, point of control above. That's a number two. If it had to start, it had been number one, right? There's one trade, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Then you got triangle down with a star and the um, and then you got a triangle up. That's really about a four, but they're they're parallel. They matched. They set you off long, right? As you come down here, nothing, nothing, nothing. So that so if you look at the count, this is trade number one. This is trade number two. They both went to profitability. We're going to do this in ES in just a minute as well. Okay. Next is it's so what I'm thinking is when I see this, this is the first thing I'm doing is I'm going wow, I'd love to get a setup off of 50, 60 retrace up here. All right now, here's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a contradiction, right? I'm gonna be below these power bars. That's true. I can't do anything about that. That's gonna happen because these are short time frames. I'm gonna have to think, what is the market trying to do? I'm gonna have to understand, where's the market trying to go? These concepts, we put in tons of tools, but you have to have an idea of which way it's going. But the important thing here is my orientation is long. Right, and I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw another piece in just a minute. So just hang with me, okay? So as it's coming down, right, this is not a setup for me. This is not a setup for me. Actually, it is. It's a uh, purple bar. Nope, I take it back. It's not. This is not. And this is not. I simply get no setups in that rotation down, but then I finally get purple bar star right off there to the right at a higher low. That's my signal for a long push to the upside. Now I want to show you something here, right? For every tool you use, there's going to be a plus and a minus, right? Part of the defining measure of a great trader is being able to read multiple time frames at once, right? Your immediate target back up is this 50 60 retrace that is your initial target if you go long right here on this star this is your target is that a good trade it is it's roughly 11 228 to 11 uh, to 11 266 it's 800 dollars a contract who doesn't want 800 dollars a contract if you don't mail it to me i'll take it right number two it did run into resistance this 50 60 retrace holds it and if you will notice it follows structure right they put in resistance they got above it. Oops, I'm trying to use the arrow. They got above it. They backside tested it. They gave a triangle down. Price got above the point of control of the triangle down. Or you had parallel triangles, however you wanted to measure it. And it pushed out again. Then it came back one more time, right? If you left your stop behind that swing and you took it long there, you did not get stopped. And it pushed. So what we're doing is we're combining very specific setups with an understanding of what the market's trying to accomplish, right? We're looking for longs at 50, 60 retraces. Stars, by the way, as anyone who's in the room knows, if you get to the 50, 60 retrace and you get a star coming out of it, that is a long by itself. So I apologize, I have to correct myself. That star bar is a valid long, guys. So uh, please, I correct myself. And that trade, by the way, right there, that 11, 2, 19 with the star, right? was eventually worth over 150 points or three thousand dollars a contract right i want you to want to put that in your head right so we have a purpose to make money and we have a plan right but you can't be someone and where i see guys have the most difficulty is they are trying to trade everything and be a perfect trader for all markets and it doesn't work you really have to be a very much a specialist in trading futures because as much as you may understand this while it's static it's much much harder i coach a lot of guys one-on-one -on -one. i've helped a lot of people go from frustration to profitability but you you cannot flip your brain nearly as quickly as you think you can flip your brain effectively at a high win rate you can't you're just your decision making deteriorates even with great tools your decision as you go through the course of the day will deteriorate right so let's keep going through here, All right? Next, we get to where this gentleman got stopped.
So this gentleman decides after watching the market, make all these moves with all these setups over here for the long, that this is where he decides he wants to go long. So my first question to this gentleman would be, well, if you took this trade and you took this trade long, right? My first question would be, why wouldn't you take this long? Why wouldn't you take this long? And why wouldn't you take this long at that location? Because all of those are better locations than right off the high. Why were they better locations? Here's a good question. Why were they better locations? Okay. I can give you two reasons for that. Number one, I got the benefit of a 50, 60 retrace, right? If you look at the height of the low, of that rotation down, it was almost a hundred points. Let's see if it was, uh, 318 to 203, 100 points usually shakes out a lot of weak hands, right? So where did he get stopped? Let's go look. Three ninety five to fifty five. So a little bit more than a thirty point rotation. Sixty five, forty, sixty five, thirty five, forty five points. Right now, now just stay with me. Stay with me for a second, because I'm going to show you something. Okay. Had he stayed with the idea of at least getting a fifty sixty retrace, even though this eventually turned into a short, it, as you can see, it still pushed out eventually. Right, and what that person could have done is that simply this I'm going to take it from the bottom of this big swing and I'm going to assume there's buyers at this 50 retrace okay so what am I looking for in that 50 retrace number one if I think it's bullish this is what I want that 50 retrace to look like I want it to come into that 50 60 and pop out I hate consolidations but even without having done that all right let's go look take a closer look at what was there so let's say he even made a mistake and he took the star bars coming off of here now the star bar i recommend is the one that has physical contact with the 5060 that's this bar right here this is the first star to the upside that has physical contact with the 5060. that trade would have taken him from roughly 345 all the way up to 375 six hundred dollars a contract right did he get any other setups in this area that would have helped him so we can go look? So no here. Um, hard to call. This is a triangle down bar above. It would have let you squeeze out. It. So the key to this is when you take this, you have to keep the stop. You use the more conservative stop with the physical close behind the bar that you're taking. This is triangle down star. I mean, uh, triangle down purple bar star. That's very positive long. You take it on the star, your stop is right here. You take the trade here, your stop is again, physical close behind this bar. And that would have let you, either one of those would have let you stretch it out. No trade here, right? The, uh, um, let's go back and let's see a little bit further to the right. Oh, 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 I forgot one other thing. On the way up, remember, he's now into these single prints that are up here. And this is very, very important, right? So guys in the room, remember I'm going to mention these three bar combos right over here, right? This right here, I know is going to limit the upside of that trade once I get that three bar combo and I'm hunting for it, okay? And if you'll look up there again, you will notice there was simply no short setup for me except, except right over, if I was going to short this, let's go hunt it the other way. pink bar there's no two bar combo until right so i want to remind you this became the resistance right and then if you look right over here on this it would have given you i'm trying to make sure i don't tell don't, that i'm telling 100 percent not a lie excuse me a second so the the point behind so, so let me go to the point behind this i'm not looking long up here right once i'm in these single prints right i'm already looking for a short opportunity when i'm up here i'm either looking for the aggressive short opportunities or right i am looking right the the, the long opportunity i would have looked at if i was absolutely mega aggressive would have been down here in this 50 60 retrace 
neighborhood, right? But I already know I'm into the single prints. And so the, the, let me wrap up with this, with this concept. You've got to look at the bigger chart. And the guys I see having difficulty with this seem to want the market to keep going up or keep going down in a straight direction. And the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ don't provide that, right? I'm going to show you just really quick and wrapping this up, right? If you try to go long up here, right? Look at all those trades up there, right? People are trying to buy. They were trying to push long. Anyone going long up here was getting stopped left and right. Why? Because we were pushing out. First of all, look at the day's range and look at where we were, right? So when we're pushing up there, right? They make this final push right up here. This big push, right? So you see how big that push is? And see how it fails to get above the high of the day on the left? That's the biggest push of the day. This should give you a warning. Sorry, I'm going back to the ways, but I can't help myself. Secondly, if I'm looking for the longs in ES, I'm going to use the highest range available, right? So again, I'm going to go do the same thing in the morning. I want to see buyers step in first if that's my strategy. In other words, I don't want to be aggressive off the bottom. So if I do that, right, again, I don't need the waves to tell me this. I can see quite clearly that I get an impulse move right up here, right? So again, the easiest way to do that is to do this right here. 50, 60 retrace. When you get into the 50, 60 retrace, you are looking for a star to come off of there. Let me show you exactly how that would have worked so you're clear, right? Um, where the star is best, guys, is when it comes in at an apex like this. So I'm going to show you. When it comes into an apex like this, see how it's in the 50, 60? That's the best. However, because the market's the market, sometimes these work too. So this is, let's just look at the stars that we're touching, right? Long, stop, long, super paid on that, right? That trade pushed you all the way out without stopping you from that location. That entry was roughly 36.64 all the way up to 37.07, right? So I'm not erasing the support resistance lines or any of that other stuff. You can also see here, we clearly got above the support resistance area here, pushed all the way back in, and it gave you that star. So one stop, let's say that's minus seven points. And then the next one pays you from 36.65 all the way up to 37.05. That's 50 points, right? That's a lot of money on the S&P 500, right? Next, let's say once I'm up here, see this next huge wave here? That's exhaustion. That's what that market's doing up there is it's pushing to exhaustion, right? But let's say I still wanted to be long, okay? I have one or two choices. I can draw my 50 retrace from down here to over here, and you will see that I came right in to the 50 retrace, or I can draw it off this base of that wave alone and look for my entries off the 50 retrace. Now I want to go back. I'm going to go back for a second and show you what the entry is again. I'm just going to look at the star without looking at anything else. Okay. Star right there. That my friends, if you took this trade right over here, this trade at 1246 pops you out from 3684 to 3710, 3711, right? That's 80, 9404. Did it, let's see if it hit the 30 round. It did not. Right. Now, when it comes off here, off the right, see where it puts this little, little, um, I want to show you this little three bar combo. This becomes the wave to the high, which becomes resistance. Sorry, I'm just going to rush through it because my family needs me. Right. And then this became my little three bar combo right over here, which generally provided me with the resistance. I know it got up above it a little bit, but it's the last hour and they were kind of messing around. So what was the trade there? Right. So I'm going to show you what the trade was. If I wanted to short this, I can apply the same exact log logic to this point, right? I get the impulse move. We clearly break the swing. I'm going to draw the 50, 60 back and see if they'll come back. I don't get a star coming out of here, but right over here on the right-hand side, I get triangle up, bar down, and I'm off to the races. And I'm going to show you one other thing. If I wanted, if I wanted to be aggressive in here, right? And I am looking for the short. So there's two things. First of all, I'm looking for potential head and shoulders. How do I do that? Just look where the last power bar is. See something traded above and below. So now you know. Hey, they're trying to form a power bar, right? 
But if I took all these trades, the reason why the 5060 is valuable, right? If I just took all these trades, particularly when we were chop over here, I did get like, this is a short setup that got stopped. This is a short setup that worked. This is uh, not a short setup. Uh, let me make sure I'm not lying about anything else. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, this is a short setup that stopped. This is a short setup that worked. This is a short setup that worked. Short setup that worked. Parallel triangles. And then finally over here to the right, uh, we closed. Sorry. So that's how it breaks down. Do me, do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Don't take longs that set up right over here for continuation at the high of the day. That's not what, that's really what, not what the room is designed to do. Wait for a 50, 60 retrace. Count your A, B, C, D waves, right? You do not want to keep going long. If you've had a clear A, B, oops, I'm going to draw A, B, C, D, okay? The, hey, straight up heyday markets are over. You cannot take the long up here and keep going. That's all there is to it. You're just going to get smoked. So anyways, I want every member of my room to succeed. You can succeed. Follow the process. Learn your larger time frames. Learn the algo entries, coordinate the two of them, and make some money. My name is Simon. I'm with Trade and Perform Coaching. If you'd like to visit the room, you can visit the room right here, T-R-A-D-E-N-P-E-R-F-O-R-M at gmail.com. The cost of the room, it's $95 a month. If you just want to be a member, see the live trading room, look at the charts, get the algos, live commentary, et cetera, et cetera. If you want the algos on your desktop, it's $250 a month, and you get everything I just mentioned plus the algos, Okay. Be smart in this market, right? Almost every member has done well in this market crash, right? I want this for all of y'all. So please put your focus on knowing where you're at. We, it's fine to have emotions, but don't trade emotionally. I'll talk to everyone later. Have a great night. I'm looking forward to Tuesday. I'll talk to you all later, guys. Bye.